I hear sometimes people say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a pragmatist. Or someone else will say, well, you know, I'm, I bring a great deal of, of knowledge about the history to the office of president. And I was thinking, you know, what really, what the president really needs around, you know, as their advisors, are problem solvers. I mean, I'm talking about people. Like I've work, tried, but I had to fire so many of them. I'm talking about people that go all the way from doing uh, crossword puzzles to strategic games to chess. Now you're talking but, about thinking. But but beyond that, obviously, people who are in the business of solving problems. Because that that is, you know, that is what's missing. The United States cannot do well. We can't be number one unless we're number one in problem solving. But we're not. Just remember, Mike, number one is much better than number two. What we have instead of a problem solver is we have someone who, in the Donald Trump, who is in the, the business of uh, salesmanship, you know, instead of leadership. That's what we have. And, you know, and we're not going to get anywhere that way. And, it's, and the hardest thing, as I've said many times in the show, the hardest thing to do is to get people to understand what is motivating them when they're in the grips of a unfolding fraud, where they have visions of sugar plums. I want to share something head. with you, Mike. Go ahead. I offered help. Uh, President Trump, I offered help. And uh, I told him, I said, you can borrow my bullhorn. I still have it from 9-11, and he didn't want to do it. I thought that would make him look more presidential. Well, I don't think you really can use that. You know, that was like a one-time deal, you know, frankly. You know, but, uh, you know, but... That's what my dad said. But my but the point is is that is that what we have now is someone that is very able at building an audience. He learned how to build an audience on The Apprentice, and it was kind of a. I mean, who Thank watched? You, Mike. I who, appreciate it. Who watched that show? Millions, millions, you know, but, and millions of people. But what types of? I, mean, I didn't watch it. I didn't know anybody that watched it. Did you know anybody that watched it? I read two surveys that very highly intellectual people loved it. What, what surveys were those? I don't know right off the top of my <laughs> head, but it was there, believe me. Well, no, that's the problem, is that we can't believe you. They say, you say, believe me, but... No, you don't want to believe me, because no. people fear change and greatness, and they're still very upset about Hillary not being the first female president, and she'll never be, by the way. Well, but I, she'll always be my friend. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's really. I'm sure that that's really, uh, really meaningful to her. So, but but let's let's go back for a second. I'm concerned about her, Mike. Why? What's wrong with her? Well, I can't say it over the air. We're not on the air right now, are we? No, we are. Yes, of course. Oh, oh I can't say it then. Well, you know, she came back and she had this part of her. She has this book out, and she. What, the interesting part of it is when. During the debate, you know, she was she had walked over to the audience to, to be, you know, engaged with them. Are we talking about Hillary? Yeah. You mean she waddled over, and you were hovering over her. She you know? built like a pear. No, that I can tell you. But you were hovering over her. You were, you were, uh, you were using. I never her. hovered over. You, you were using. I was behind her. And believe me, no, I wouldn't were, want to get close to her. No, but you were hovering over her. You were, you were invading her space, even though she had invaded your space first. But you. She did so to get close to the to the audience. What were, what were you doing there? Didn't you realize that that was you know? Well, it wasn't an issue at the time. Nobody brought it up that I was that close. If you look from the front angle, it looks like I'm almost right behind her, but I'm actually probably about eight feet behind her. No, I think everybody brought it up at the time. I think when she wrote this book, I forget the name of it. Is do you remember the name of the new book? She's peddling. It's doing horrible. She it's can't sell any books. It's not a. It's not a, a bestseller. It's not a bestseller. She's having a lot of trouble trying to sell her book because nobody cares. Nobody cares about losers. They care about winners, and I'm the winner. Well, some people think you're a loser as well, though. Well, that's just not presidential to think like that. Well, no, they they think you're not. You're a loser because you don't act like you're presidential. Well, I'm the first president probably in over 100 years that has blonde hair. Well, 
You have, you have light hair. I guess that makes me a white supremacist. Uh, no, but the uh, I guess I guess really what people would say about you is that you're um, trying to help us become great again. No, you're just you're a salesman. If you know, as I've said many times, your past is our future, and your past is is lawsuits, being sued for fraud, uh, bankruptcy, employing lots of people, discriminating against blacks in your housing. Uh, you know, so I think that's where people are right now, is they're starting to wake up. You know, they're starting to wake up now. The uh, the New- I'm looking at the New York Times best-selling books. Do you think I'll be reelected? I don't think so. No, I don't think you have a chance. Who do you think's gonna? Who's gonna do it? They got a Democrat this time. Well, if it's not you, it's gonna be a Democrat, right? Well, you're a pretty smart guy, but who's 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 the Democrat going to be? Well, I don't know. That's that remains to be seen, doesn't it? That remains to be seen. But maybe it's Bernie Sanders. Oh, I don't think so. We're the country's more interested in a female, not a bloodhound. We're not interested in animals at this point. We're interested in people who are females that need to break the glass ceiling well who do you who are you, who do you most fear who do I fear yes Vlad who Vlad no no <laughs> he's not running uh, who do you most fear is a oh, candidate oh I've seen him run uh, I, I don't I don't know if he even understands the question my Okay, let me just say it again. Who do you think, who do you most fear that, uh, as a candidate against you? I really haven't given a lot of thought about that because those types of things never entered my mind because of my egomaniacal personality. So you admit that you do have narcissistic personality? No, I think I have an egomaniacal personality. Well, what does that mean? That means that I cherish every word that I say and I believe it to be true I believe in myself well why do you okay so have you learned anything since you've been president have you have you anything you changed yes yes I have I wished in a way now that I could return to Miralago permanently I gave up a lot to defend, to run, to protect this country. I gave up all my personal, my private planes, my private life. I did that for you. And like Jesus, you I'm getting kicked in the teeth. I came here to save people, help protect people, and now I'm being chastised and nailed to the cross. But why? But 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 see, you don't help people. That's the thing. You adv- you take advantage of people. You exploit people. Well, I haven't done that in a while. I haven't bought any hotels or anything lately. No, no, but you you take advantage of people. You exploit people. You you, uh, hurt people. You make fun of people. You put people down. I mean, you're the classic bully, aren't you? Well, that's just insecurity. Weren't you a bully in school? That's just a little insecurity. No, no, but weren't you you a bully in school? Well, not a bully. Look at all the people you ran against. You had had nasty names for every person you ran against. Well, that was... Yeah, Yeah, we mentioned Hillary Clinton. Oh, her book's not selling. It's not selling. But but the point is, why do you have to say negative things about everybody? Because sometimes the truth hurts. No, but the but see that's the point. Like is I you, said, you, negative things about Hurricane Hillary down in the Gulf. See that's that's the thing. You 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 play on people who are prejudiced, and you reinforce their prejudices and their biases by by engaging in vicious abstractions. Do you know what a vicious abstraction is? Yes. What? I will say this though, Mike. I forgive you. Well, for your I, I personal should. attacks on the greatest president that God ever made. No, but I, what I'm trying to say is that you're, you're, you haven't done anything since you've been president except look fail. Look at my face. Do I look vicious to you? Yes. I do? Yes. How, how do I look vicious? You just look. You're, you're, your whole makeup, it looks to me like a, like a bully. You look like a bully. You look like one of the bullies that we, a lot of us younger, or a lot of us smaller kids had to deal with. Why, because I'm you tall? May, well, it's not just that you're tall, but you're you're a bully. You're uh, you're aggressive and you're mean-spirited and you hurt people, 
and you don't even know how to. You, Sometimes you, people need to be crushed. You 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 don't you have no empathy. But you know what? We're out of time, and we will see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for joining us on Talk of the Town with former San Diego City Attorney Mike Aguirre and the President's courtesy of John Baker Productions here on KNSJ Descanso.